So uh, we already talked about the Cygnus, but this was a, a big story, uh, I guess about a week ago, that NASA announced the next phase of their commercial cargo contracts to carry cargo to and from the space station. So the existing contracts are for Orbital ATK, which builds the, the Cygnus. Um, and uh, so this is, I think, the sixth flight of, of this. It can carry about five or 6,000 pounds of, of payload uh, each time. And um, it's a disposable spacecraft. So once it undocks, it burns up in the atmosphere. It can't bring any uh, any material back to Earth. Uh, the other contract had been with, uh, and still is, with uh, SpaceX for the Dragon vehicle. And uh, this has been uh, uh, launching for the last couple of years as well. They've had so far six successful flights of this and then one failure last year. The Cygnus also had a failure where the, uh, the rocket uh, blew up uh, just a few seconds after launch. And so they're using United Launch Alliance right now to, uh, to uh, launch them. Um, but uh, the SpaceX Dragon capsule, it can dock to the station, they can unload it, and then they can reload it. And uh, this part of it uh, survives reentry and it uh, parachutes into the Pacific Ocean and gets picked up by a ship. So this is right now the only way we really have of uh, returning substantial amount of cargo from the ISS. And so what was announced uh, a week or so ago is they're adding a third version, a third spacecraft to the, to the fleet of cargo carriers. And this is called Dream Chaser. It's the uh, Sierra Nevada uh, Corporation, which uh, is building this up in Louisville. Um, so it's uh, you know a Colorado, connection in addition to it will launch on an Atlas V rocket from ULA, so another uh, Colorado connection. So they have been selected to fly cargo. They did not get selected to carry crew uh, when that was announced a year or so ago, but uh, now they have a chance. And so here's an animation of how this is going to work. So here's the Atlas V and the Dream Chaser is is inside the payload fairing here. Sorry, this is sort of an infomercial, but uh, it's got nice graphics, so. So what's interesting is it docks tail first and they carry the cargo uh, into a, uh, a docking port. And then once it uh, uh, undocks, it, uh, well, sorry, they're just moving from one port to another one here, I guess. And so then when they're ready to come home, they undock. Uh, the trunk with the solar panels on it uh, burns up in the atmosphere. And uh, so that's the way of disposing of the trash. And then the uh, Dream Chaser itself comes back similarly to what the uh, Space Shuttle Orbiters did. And it will then uh, land on a runway. And the uh, one advantage that they're advertising on this is from the time that they undock to when uh, it could be on the ground and uh, retrieve the, the onboard experiments or cargo, whatever, is uh, potentially only a couple hours. And so that's much faster than the, uh, the existing uh, capability on the Dragon, which comes down in the ocean currently. And uh, 
you know, it's a couple days to get the, the payload back. And this is also designed to, to fly many times. So that's that. And now just a, a couple more things in the commercial realm and, and then we'll, we'll end. And so SpaceX uh, has had a couple of uh, interesting milestones since December. And uh, I think it was December 21st, they launched a new version of their Falcon 9 rocket uh, carrying 11 small uh, communication satellites. And uh, this was the first time that they attempted to recover the first stage back near the landing site. And uh, so this is an interesting time lapse. Here's the, uh, the takeoff uh, streak. This is the first stage coming back and, and trying to land vertically. And indeed, it succeeded. So this is about 150 feet high, so a 15-story high rocket and here it's coming down under the thrust of a single one of its nine rocket engines and here's a video of this happening and we'll watch that one more time so i think this is a fisheye lens so it sort of looks like it's tilted you'll understand why i'm saying that in a second Okay, so uh, the next launch was, uh, uh, gosh, it was like January 11th. And this was from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. And uh, this was carrying a, a NASA Earth observing satellite called Jason 3. Um, it launched in very thick fog, um, but the launch itself was successful. And uh, then they were going to attempt to land on this barge. And so <laughs> this is about 360 feet long and about uh, nearly 200 feet wide. And this is, uh, this is uh, I've forgotten, it's uh, um, a science fiction author, Banks is his last name. So this is the name of a starship. Just read the instructions. Um, so here's the target. And here's an onboard view of the rocket coming in, smack dab in the middle of the target. And now let's look at a video of this. Oh, oh no! So right now the thinking is, uh, and they, they have a lot more investigation to do, but the thinking is that this leg failed to lock in place tightly, uh, possibly because since there was so much humidity launching through the fog, the, uh, yeah, the uh, liquid oxygen causes a lot of ice to form on the outside of the spacecraft. It's possible that a chunk of ice hit this and, and damaged it. It's possible that ice formed on the, the mechanism. But the good thing is, uh, I'm sorry, let's, that they recovered most of the, of the wreckage. And so here's the barge with a, a, a tow boat. And uh, there's the, the remains of the rocket. And certainly the, uh, uh, the leg that failed is underneath uh, where that's collapsed. And this was a view when they got back to Long Beach in California. And so what's interesting is that these are the, the nozzles of the nine rocket engines in the, in the base. And that looks fairly intact for that part. But certainly the upper part of the rocket didn't fare so well. So uh, anyway, um, they're going to launch another uh, mission from Florida uh, toward uh, let me think, it's uh, in a couple of weeks, so I think the middle-ish of February, and uh, they'll be trying this again with another barge landing off, uh, off the coast of Florida. So we will see. But uh, the idea of all of this is to be able to reuse at least the first stage of the rocket um, to drive down the cost. 
And in fact, that first one that I showed you that landed in Florida uh, just about uh, two weeks ago, they took it back out to the launch pad and re held it down and ignited all nine engines. And eight of the nine engines apparently worked just fine. One of them had a little bit of, a, they call it thrust instability. And so they're checking what happened there. But uh, anyway, they, uh, they hope sometime this year to recover one and then fly it a second time. And speaking of that, there's another uh, one. This is called the Blue Origin New Shepard. This is a company that's owned by uh, Jeff Bezos of Amazon fame. And this is intended to carry tourists uh, up to about uh, um, 100 kilometers above the Earth. And so it's got a capsule on the end that the people would ride in, and then the, uh, the rocket comes down vertically as well. And so here's a... Another infomercial from these guys. They just launched this a second time. So back in November, they did a test. Uh, they successfully recovered the, the rocket. And then uh, January 22nd, they attempted to launch it again. This is from uh, West Texas. And so this is the capsule coming down. Okay, so now we have competition. But uh, I should point out, this is not intended to go to orbit. It goes up about uh, 100 kilometers, 60 miles, goes up vertically, comes back. They are working on uh, a much larger version that they hope to have uh, launching, um, I think uh, they're saying by 2020, um, to carry satellites into orbit and recover it in the same fashion.